Welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling, still not affiliated with the College Board. And today I'm going to give some sample calculations of confidence intervals. Last time we defined a confidence interval. I just want to try to reinforce that <coughs> with a couple of made-up examples. So we're going <coughs> to talk about average calories that a 15-year-old consumes in a day. So the mu is the unknown parameter. Average calories per day. <clears throat> and we're going to take a sample of 100, a nice round number. So take a sample of 115 year olds. And suppose that we find that the sample mean, x bar, is 2800. And suppose that the standard deviation, and this is where I'm going to make a weird assumption is given and known to equal 400. Okay, so that's, I'm just going to put parentheses, that's a weird assumption that allows me to use this, te <coughs> this technique, and then we'll change that assumption in a at a later point where we estimate the standard deviation. Okay, and the, so the question is, what is a... 95% confidence interval, I'll abbreviate that CI, confidence interval for mu. That's the typically um, how we phrase the question. And then I'll uh, explain how the answer might relate to that or might, uh, might differ slightly from way, what you're thinking about that. <clears throat> uh, I also talked about that last time. Okay, so I just want to do the calculation. So the calculation, remember the confidence interval is going to equal x bar plus or minus a margin of error. And then the key formula, margin of error is equal to z star sigma over square root of n. Okay, and where does z star come from? Remember z star equals the inverse normal function, inf norm, of 1 minus the confidence level over 2. Confidence level will be 0.95 for 95%. So <coughs> inf norm of 0.05 over 2 or inf norm of 0.25. In form of 0.25. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to find it is to look at a table like this. Let me get a table up here. Okay, this is called a t distribution table. And if you look down, this is very typical, you'll see a uh, set of confidence levels. I hope we can see this. And <coughs> over here we have 95%. Let me see if I can get that highlighted. That, see here, 95%. Whoops, didn't mean to do that to it. And then above the 95 is 1.96, which is actually the inf norm of uh, 0.975, or the negative of the inf norm of 0.025. So the number we're after is this 1.96 which is right above the 95% confidence level. Okay, that wasn't so successful. Um, let me go back to the chalkboard. And so our answer here was the Z star is equal to 1.96. Okay, <coughs> and so the margin of error is going to be 1.96 times sigma, which I said was 400, remember up here, over the square root of n. I said the n was 100, so the square root of that is 10. So it's going to be about 40 times about 2, which would be about 80, sort of 79, something like that. I'll say it's about 79. <coughs> and that'll be the margin of error. 
Um, and that in turn means that the confidence interval is equal to x bar, which was 2800 plus or minus 79. And so that's, uh, and then what that means is, again, if the true mu, that is the true mean calories eaten per day by a 15 year old, were <coughs> outside this interval, that is less than 2721 or greater than 2879, then we would observe x bar equals 2800 with a probability of less than 5%. 5% five percent meaning a hundred minus our confidence level which was ninety five percent okay so that's again we don't make probability statements about mu we make probability statements about our sample and so we say we would observe our sample <laughs> with a very low probability if the true mean were outside the confidence interval I'll do one more sample calculation. This time I'll do a sample proportion. So let's have a, some kind of poll. Let's say um, what proportion of voters in a particular district uh, favor stronger gun control. And it's a large district, but we take us and we take a sample of just 64 voters. So n equals 64. <coughs> and the sample proportion that we estimate that we find favoring that, let's say, is um, 27.6%. I think that would be, or 27.6. No, I'm going to change that. Let's make that, hang on. I don't know why I was doing that calculation. Okay, let's say that the proportion that favors that in the poll is just 40%. Okay. Um, so 40% of the voters. Uh, favor that um, in the sample and the true proportion that favors it we'll call P and now we w let's say we want to do a 90 percent confidence interval for the true P for the population proportion that favors that among all these voters Okay, so let's, we have our formula for the margin of error is equal to z star sigma over square root of n. Now for sigma, we can use the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat. We can actually use um, because it's binary data, we can use the sample proportion times 1 minus the sample proportion, or the square root of 0.4 times 0.6. And <coughs> z star is our invnorm of 1 minus 0 0.90 over 2 because we have a 90 percent confidence interval and we, I remember that being 1.64 or it would be negative 1.64 and then n was 64 so the square root of n was 8 so that will give us the margin of error is equal to 
1.64 times the square root of 0.4 times 0.6 all over 8 and that'll be approximately equal to uh, <coughs> I'm gonna say well, I'll calculate it <coughs> 